You're tuned in to Down East Bucks Podcast. Today, Chris sits down with me as we join Northeast Traditions, Justin Cook, and Jim Bob Grady. So first podcast of the year anyways, right? Yep. Yeah, uh, kind of just dropping the cobwebs off. Might as well do it with us. Right. We yeah. don't know what the hell we're doing. So. <laughs> <Right>. Nope. <laughs> no, no, no disrespect, guys. No disrespect. We love having you here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why not? Yep. <laughs> you doing any turkey hunting? Yeah. Yeah. I've actually been shooting with my boy. Uh, hoping to get him out on Youth Day. Uh, got Quite a few times kicking around the house, hoping to get him out and get him one, and uh, who knows, maybe try to get get together with a couple more youth people. Uh, went with the Mojo Boys last year, and that was a lot of fun. Had a blast. They tripled up. Uh, I posted a video of that on our channel there last awesome. year, and uh, I don't know if you guys ever heard of Run and Arrow. Yep. Um, I'm on their pro staff, and they actually just posted like their rendition of it you know they you didn't they, tell me i was coming to talk to a pro well <laughs> they, they they did their own version of it so it, it's cool to see you know two two different videos of the same aspect and how they put it together um yeah they're wicked awesome people out there uh uh trevor and and nick they you know they kind of took me under their wing a couple of years ago and that's cool let me get on their pro staff and and i i sent them videos and and content and they you know, they would edit it, put it together, right. and then they've been awesome with letting me do my own thing. So that's the biggest thing too. Yeah, I mean, sometimes like we had we had people approach us for sponsors and stuff, and they wanted all the rights to the content. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Tell you what to do. I'm like, yeah, yeah, we're not we're not about that. Yeah, no, <laughs> right. They they've been really awesome about that. They I've never had an issue with it as long as I keep sending them content. You know, whether it's the same stuff that I record and, and put out myself, or or if it's stuff that I, you know. Just let them let them use. Right. Um, but either way, they've they've been awesome about it. So they're, they're good guys, and I enjoy being part of that. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it's probably a whole different group of people that are seeing the videos too. That way, yeah. Right, I right. mean, it's it's mostly it's nationwide. I mean, with right. them, they have their following is substantial compared to what we have started. Yeah. We're fairly new still, so obviously, right. you know, we don't have that following yet. We're Maybe we'll get there someday. Maybe we won't. We don't. It's not. That's not our goal. Our goal it's is to share. Different crowd. Too, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, no, they're they're good people, and and they put out some cool content. You know, Nick's from Ohio. Trevor's from uh, New York. So, the style of hunting's different compared to what Maine is right. in general. But that's so. that's part of the fun too. Is yeah. Just kind of seeing, yeah. Like I'm part of like. I joined some Facebook pages, even like Alabama deer hunters. I just like to see what they celebrate yeah. and like how they do it. Yeah. Just, yeah, just to see a different lifestyle, you know. Oh yeah, same kind of idea, but right, it is different. Yes, yeah. it's, it's a lot of fun, and I mean, the people that are part of their pro staff and even their field staff, it's just cool. You know, they have a Facebook page, and we all get to post stuff and talk to each other, and and, right. and you know, comment on whatever, and it's cool just to interact with. Like, I've never met them in person, but you know, Nick and Trevor, they feel like family. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yes. they're just so like open about things, and this it's just it's a cool group to be part of. Um, you know, especially letting me do what I want to do as well. So yeah, mm. give you that freedom. Yeah, yep. They're in Ohio. Uh, Nick Nick's in Ohio, and uh, Trevor's in New York. So they, you know, they're friends, and they they are co-founders of this yeah establishment. So it's it's it's, it's different, but it's cool. It's yep. a lot of fun. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. As long as you're having fun doing what you're doing, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and, and all they ask from us is, you know, like just to make sure that we help share the content. You know, we comment and like on it and stuff, and just help spread it around. And I mean, that's how you build your your following, anyway. So that's what I loved about like you. Part, you guys are part of Jack uh, Jacko Fuel. Yeah, 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 they, yeah. You know, they don't bother us with like, hey, you got to put this content. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got yep. to do this. Yep. They just kind of they just appreciate us yep. for for even mentioning them once. Yeah, and and honestly, I mean they're. Their stuff is awesome. I, I drink their it's little clean. packets. Yeah. yeah, I drink their packets daily, once or twice a day. My wife, I got her. She's in on her workout regimen, so yeah, I got her on there. Jocko Mulk, which I know Jameson, he he loves that stuff. Yep. So 
protein powder is pretty good. I yeah. don't drink it all the time, but yeah. drink it, you know, supplement once in a while. Right, yeah. I feel like I need to. Then it's a quick, cookies. easy. Yeah. One of those cookies. <laughs> yeah, those. yeah. I had, <laughs> I had, I had, bad. Sweet tooth. I hadn't had a cookie until we went up on, on Jameson's moose hunt, and he had some, and I tried it, and yeah, they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty but, good. Tastes like a chocolate chip cookie. It's funny. I, I didn't really get into that whole scene until his moose hunt. Yeah. You know, he's uh, up there drinking his protein, eating his protein stuff, and is drinking his uh, uh, packets there. Oh, the uh, electrolyte, electrolyte packets. packets and stuff. Yeah, I'm like, man, and this guy freaking does hundreds of miles, obviously tracking them every yeah. year. So it's like, you know, he tries to stay somewhat healthy and fit. So yeah. I, like, think that, I think that's what people, a lot of people, forget to stay hydrated for tracking. Yeah, because it takes a lot out of you that you don't realize. Like, yeah, if you're out in the cold, you're not out in the heat. Right. I'm bad about it too. Like, yeah, you just you get good at it. No, you get <laughs> you get chasing the buck and you just totally forget to even drink water. Yeah, but I mean that adrenaline kicks in and then you're in trouble. Yeah, for but seven miles. It, in. it helps like the day before. Yeah, make sure the day yeah. before you're well hydrated and then yeah. drink a bunch in the morning and yeah, of course you have to have your coffee and stuff like too. But <laughs> yeah, don't, one or two is fine. Well, yeah. feel like you, get you don't want to drink. Have a nightcap. Relax. Yeah, right. Yeah, help you sleep a little. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you're thinking about that buck too much, you find the track. And then you exactly. Like, yeah. You're thinking about where he's going to be and yeah. want to make the right move. Well, that was the biggest thing, too. Like, on, on the moose hunt when we went up, it's like we knew that we were going to be dedicated to putting miles on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like the night before, obviously, you know, a few guys in the woods, you're relaxing, you're having fun, you're away from life in general. So it's like yeah, you want to kind of let loose and have a little bit of fun, but at the same time, it's like... We are here for a purpose, mm -hmm. yeah. so we we did keep it pretty tame for the most yeah. part. And I mean, didn't drink much. We put miles on there in the day, and it's like it, it does make a difference when you hydrate properly. And you're you know, if you're out there ten miles into it, you shoot a moose, and you got you know a four or five mile pack out, pack out. Yeah, which fortunately <laughs> we didn't have. Yeah, we, we were we, planning on it. Yeah, but. we were planning on it, but you know, we got we got lucky with <laughs> with how things went down for sure. Yeah, it worked out. <laughs> worked out pretty good we kind of wished we didn't get we didn't get the whole pack out experience which we kind of wanted that but it's then fine you, we'll yeah. take <laughs> we'll take it we'll take it but i think i do think one of the bigger regrets of that whole hunt was we didn't record putting the moose in the back of the truck oh my word yeah we were fortunate enough where we could actually bring the truck to, the, up moose. to the moose That's good. so to watch four guys lift a, you know, what we figured at least nine hundred pound moose. It's close to it, probably. Into the back of a truck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was it was quite a scene. Yeah. yeah. But we all got behind it. I think he was pushing on the back of me like a, yeah, like a line, like a line there. He's just kind of <laughs> yeah. pushing on me. I'm pushing yeah. on the moose and somehow we slid him up in the back you didn't of my have truck. Any pretenders that were like, Oh yeah, I'm doing yeah, it. I'm <laughs> helping everybody was in on well, it for sure. If, they, if we were, I don't think we would have got it in. Oh, no yeah. way. You're not getting any moose meat. You don't help. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no. Yeah. That was awesome for sure. We're, yeah, we were fortunate. My brother came up that day. So it was just the three of us. Yeah. But he was on a moose hunt with his wife, and they got a moose Monday, so he managed to come up Wednesday, and yeah. Wednesday afternoon we got the moose. So we had an extra helper. I don't think three of us. Wow, we wouldn't have got the moose without him. Yeah. Yeah. He was the caller. So. Yeah, and if anyone's listening, you haven't put in your moose permits open right now so yep oh yeah till may sure. 15th i think yeah get those in i usually wait till wait till what is it, may 15th yeah i, <laughs> I think it's like different yeah it's right around there i've never been drawn either so that might be part of my problem well i'll tell you i waited 24 years before i got mine i think it has honestly call me conspiracy theorists but i think it has something to do with like the names i don't know we have, we have cousins that get drawn as soon as they're available to get drawn every time <laughs> we know people like that my my buddy dave he the last uh, initials s by the way <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah my buddy dave he is the same way he he got drawn and then uh did his time of three years where he can't apply applied he got drawn for another bull tag my buddy jay he's the same way it's like i don't know they, i think jay's had three moose permits maybe four i think three yeah but he uh yeah, I mean, it is what it it's is. Luck. You know? It's a lot of luck. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's. Uh, I'm fortunate that I've known people who have gotten drawn. Like, Jameson got drawn, so I got to go with him. Um, my cousin, Melissa and Jessica, got drawn the same year. 
uh, well, one of them got drawn the year before, but her son had a procedure, so he couldn't. Yep. She couldn't go, so she deferred it to the following year. So we did, um, you know, a double hunt essentially. Yeah. They had the same zone, and they they both shot their moose within an that hour of each other. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, we're happy just to see anyone in the family. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. we all take care of each other. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, like if we if we need the meat, yeah, and we go ask them, they're gonna they'll, they'll give it to us. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun to go as a. Just some part of the gang because there's yeah. no pressure on yeah. you. Yeah. You're yeah. just like yeah. you're just going for fun and yeah. ex- the way, experience. Like, what are my odds? You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been drawn myself, and I let my grandfather shoot. Yep. Because yeah. that year he'd gotten cancer. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, I didn't know if that was gonna be his last year. And I right. was, like, I think, fourteen or fifteen. I'm like, and he'd yep. never been going to shoot. Yeah. 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 He'll get and I had one. more fun just watching him. Yeah. And I was just a kid. Like I wanted to shoot that thing, but I was like, you know what? It doesn't even matter. Yeah. That's uh didn't he have a bowl standing over that thing for Yeah, the biggest bowl that year. No oh, shit. We called so my dad's gotten out the the moose and we look up and Shot the trees are like shaking in the back. I go, Hey dad, uh, this and we call him Pa, my yeah. grandfather. And he's like, Yeah, Ronnie, uh, we need to get away because there's a moose coming. And that thing was huge. Mm. This and is that year was you... the biggest yeah. It was the biggest uh, moose that year, wow. and it stayed there until we got these guys from, I think they were from Connecticut or Rhode Island. A father and son came and shot him while we were standing over oh, our Oh, no kidding. Yeah. No way. It hmm. was, that thing weighed like a, how big was it? I don't, want, I don't want to say it. It was almost 1,100 pounds, yeah. I think. It was the biggest moose that year. Wow. Yeah, well, state record must be like 1,300 or something like that. No, yeah. no, Yeah. It is. That's it was giant. a record for that year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for that year. Yeah, yeah. That's huge. That's, that's a big bull. And that spread was, I mean, mm-hmm. I was just a kid at the time, but I was like, I bet I could lay across in antlers. Yeah. It was so wide. Yeah, well, I, I was at home kicking rocks. Out of that. <laughs> I was too young. <laughs> yeah. so, it's funny you say that, too, as a kid. You know, like, I remember my buddy... My buddy Brooks, he went on a moose hunt when he was a kid, and he's not tall anyways. I think, what's he, five foot? He's short, yeah. Five, two, <laughs> five, three. He's, he's a short guy. All the Dow clans are all, they're all short, but he, uh, he shot a moose when he was younger, and he said he remembers it was so cold that day after they get it out, he, he would like almost crawl inside the thing <laughs> just to get warm because of body heat from it. Yeah. But that's how small he is, you know what I mean? But he, that family, they've, they've been fortunate. They've gotten, you know, a few moose permits and stuff, and yeah, didn't his son get drawn when he was yeah. four? Yeah, back, three or four. Yeah, when they first no, started. He wasn't even kids. four. He was two. Back when they did that whole like there was Man. no age limit, he <laughs> applied for his son. <laughs> two year old. You know, how, you can't even sign your license. You know what I mean? So it's like you don't know that. <laughs> it would be a prodigy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so. <laughs> but yeah, the, the state quickly got rid of that after that. I think because they realized I'm sure they had a lot of complaints <laughs> yeah. from people. Like two year olds getting drawn. What? <laughs> I've been playing for thirty yeah. years. Yeah. And two year old just got picked. Come yeah. on! Sorry to throw you under the under the bus, Brooks, but <laughs> yeah. well, that's true though because you saw like people and their kids like he's seven years old. And he made a two hundred and fifty yard shot on this two hundred and thirty pound buck. Yeah. Did, you know? Did he really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're from Sanford, and this was shot up in Jackman. Or whatever. Yeah. That's hard like, that too, though. Sense. You know that, that is hard. I mean, I remember when I shot my first deer. A lot of people were like. No, told my dad. Yeah, he didn't shoot it. Because, yeah, yeah. And I will say the story is a little bit <laughs> out of control. I, you know, I was, I was 11 years old hunting <laughs> with a 410. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, we were sitting in the tree stand, and, and that buck came out. It was just a little six pointer and single shot 410 sitting in the tree stand with dad. And he had his rifle, but I shot, missed, broke it down. A deer stood there, put another one in, shot, missed, and. I had two bullets. I mean, it's a 410. You're not going to shoot more than twice. Yeah, yeah. So dad was like, he, I, I can remember it just like it was yesterday. He's like, I'm not shooting that deer. He goes, if you want to shoot it, you're going to have to use my rifle. So he handed me a 7 millimeter Magnum. I'm 11 yeah. years old. Never shot the gun in my life. Yeah. You're gonna That's actually shoot. probably an advantage, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. I, I just, I can remember it like it was yesterday. I put the crosshairs right on that deer and I pulled the trigger and I dropped him right there. And I looked at dad and his eyes were as big as a soda can. And he <laughs> laughing at me. He's like, I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> and I, that's something I'll never forget. It was, nope. it was one of the coolest hunting memories I've ever had for sure. So I nice. shot my first deer with Chris. Yeah. He scouted out a spot and I went out with my bow. I was 13 years old. Yeah. And I, what was it, 42 yards? 
It's impressive. Yeah, it's out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was I mean, I, I look back and I'm impressed at right what you did. Yeah, I know. Yeah. At the time, I was just like, "Yeah, I got him." Nice. I think I, I remember being like, "I don't think you know what you just did." That was, yeah, that was, that was, that was yeah. intense. I know, girl. I know, grown men that don't shoot that far. Yeah, <laughs> I had mosquitoes biting me, and I would, I didn't like even swat them. I just, it was just a little dough, so I probably could have got away with knowing. Now I probably could have got away with it. Mm. Maybe even got closer, mm. but <laughs> yeah, people didn't believe that I had done that. Yeah. yeah. I was 13, so. Hey, yeah. doesn't matter. You know you did it, so that's all that matters. It's yeah. Like, you know, you're always going to have skeptics out there that are like, oh, yeah, right, okay. That that doesn't sound like it really happened, but it's like whether they believe you or not. Yeah, I mean, it was a little dough. And then so we brought it home, and I was like, I was like, oh, I can't wait to show Dad. So we get there, <laughs> we took Dad's truck. And we get there, and my dad goes, he leans over the truck, and he's looking, and he goes, yeah, probably not shooting that small again, Tom. <laughs> I was like, you're supposed to be happy for me to first year. Now, what's going on? He started the buck shaming early. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I bet he ate it, though, didn't he? Oh, of course oh, he did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he cut it up, too. Yeah. So. yeah. Those little ones, I mean, obviously, yeah. I was trying to take it easy on them. I didn't want them to cut up a big 200-pounder. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we all want the trophies, but when it comes down to it, obviously, we want the meat just as bad. I mean... Love yeah. Him. yeah, I mean, there's there's no leaner nope. meat, there's no better protein. It, it's it's sad that you get all these anti hunters that are like, you know, we need to save the animals. We can't do this. They don't right. just because they don't understand. I mean, it's nature. I mean, every right. other animal on this planet has to kill something in order to eat. Yeah, right. Why are we any different? That's how we got where we are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So it's like all their ancestors ate meat. Yep. Whether they want to face it or not. Yep. Right. <laughs> Even if you eat nothing but plants, you're still, yeah. I mean, it, you have to. It's a loving organism. Well, even that, but you have to kill all the rodents and everything to, yeah. to grow all these plants. So I, even if you only eat plants, you're still a part of, you know. Which actually, if you think about it, you're probably killing more. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you, so if food. you went by, yeah, uh, like by the number yeah. you're killing. Yeah. Well, if we, if we just ate plants, like if nobody ate meat. We would be destroying habitat oh, that yeah. deer live in. Right. So yeah. then they would die of starvation. Yeah. You know. See, well, I don't eat the vegetables because I don't want to take them away from the animals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel bad. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what if there's a rabbit that wants those carrots? Right. <laughs> they gotta eat. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing with predator hunting too. It's like you know, hunters get such a bad rap for coyote hunting or, oh. or bear hunting over bait or you know running coyotes with dogs, but it's like. If we don't control that population, you know, things are going to be bad. Things yeah, will I mean, be bad. Once it enters their yard, like their backyard, and yeah. it starts happening, it's like when New Jersey banned mm. the Yeah, fire. that's a good yeah. example. Yeah, yeah, Florida. Yeah. They, yeah. They're just now they're bad. just all yeah. over the place. Yeah, yeah well, if, and if they don't let hunters kill them, they end up using taxpayer money to hire these people and they to come in and remove the bears, right. well, whereas so they could just let hunters do it and then generate the income for the state. It's right. like, yeah. That's another win -win. whole thing. The, the revenue that the state gets, and every state in the country gets this revenue too, right? Right. That goes to a habitat. Right. You know, yeah. you wouldn't have public lands if it wasn't for us. Right, the conservationists. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't just consider us hunters. We're we're the biggest conservationists oh, yeah. in the world. Oh, yeah. hands down. You wouldn't have white-tailed deer. I mean, I understand... Before there was regulations and stuff that were the reason why the whitetails went down in the first place, yeah. but we're also the reason why they made a major rebound and they're the most plentiful game in yeah. the world now. Yeah. Well, it's funny you think about like the whole tick population in northern Maine with with, with the winter ticks and the moose and stuff. And when they first started doing that adaptive hunt, you know, a lot of people are pretty skeptical. Like, you guys literally want to clear out. The amount of cows and calves that there are because if you know if you go up there and you shoot a cow that has a calf you know that calf the chances of that calf yeah. surviving are, are pretty slim that's right um but at the same time it's like they're trying to diminish you know the amount of ticks so it's like mm -hmm. and and whether it's it's an experiment yeah whether it's true or not i did just read the other day that they say that the tick population in in those northern counties they have in their opinion gone down you know, yeah. whether that's just a state saying right. it is. That's kind of like all the dough permits that they've been giving out. Right. 
Yeah. yeah. I just don't think we didn't kill enough of them 20 years ago that it became a problem because there, there was so many moose on the landscape that yeah. they, they're going to get managed one way or another, whether if we kill them or disease or something else. And yeah. it just yeah. happened to be that the ticks were the, were the thing. So Yeah. Yeah, I remember in the 90s when we'd go up to Jackman Paz Camp. Oh, you'd see moose. moose. Oh, oh yeah. Just yeah. swimming up to the camp yeah. across Long Lake. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of roads like 201 up through Johnson Mountain. You, it's not even safe to, what, back then it wasn't even safe to drive on that road after dark. Yeah. Right. right. You're going to hit a moose. Everybody had the, the locals all had the spotlight on the side. Yeah. yeah. So you could you see, see the, the little cars, the yeah. bush guards. Yeah. We used to go up, that. We used to go up to a <laughs> camp uh, up to Suncook a lot. I spent a lot of my childhood out that way. And uh, that's what we do, you know. It started to get dark. We'd hop in the truck, go for a ride, yeah. And just everybody pile time. in and just go find moose. And it's like we'd see thirty, you know, moose a night. Yeah. Now you go up there and you see three. Yeah. Right? It's, it's but it's, yeah, I do think too. A lot of the a lot of the pressure is different too. You know, there's a lot more logging roads. There's a lot more stuff that we're we're pushing the moose back into the woods. Yeah. Not saying there's less moose. But I do think that they are learning. Yeah, they're spraying the cuts, so obviously they're not going to be in the cuts. You know. Yeah, I think moose are a lot more like deer now than they used to be. Yeah. They're they're back in the woods more. They're not as visible as they used to be. I mean, this fall when I was up at Jackman guiding, I mean, I saw over thirty moose right. in that zone eight. Yeah. So I mean, you're out this, in the back country. Yeah, I'm out in the back country hunting deer. I mean, I'm not I'm not on the roads. So, I mean. We see moose every day. It's not like there's no shortage of moose. We right. still see, we still see more moose than deer. You typically. know, to be honest with you, I'd rather hunt moose like that. Yeah, oh, it's way more fun. Well, hunt, you know. But that's the thing is like a lot of people that come up and hunt. It's like you get a lot of these out of staters and, and and no rap against out of staters, but when they come up, they think of Maine. They think, oh, moose. We're gonna ride a road. We're gonna shoot a moose. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's how it used to be. Oh, definitely. You know, but things have changed, and and in my opinion, I like it. You know, mm-hmm. obviously on. On his moose hunt, we did, you know, 30 miles in, in two and a half days or whatever, three days, and we didn't see a moose, you know. Yeah, right. we, we were expecting to walk up on a moose in the woods, but we didn't see one. But at the same time, it's like when when we did see one, it it happened so fast and it made all that worth it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, you definitely got to put your time in. And it depends on the zone, too, you know. Yeah. If, if you're in a different. zone, yeah, if you're in a zone that has a lot of cuts. The Your chances of seeing a moose are probably a little bit higher, but right. where we were, I don't yeah. think there was one cut. No, not clear cut. We yeah. never saw a clear cut. They're all just more select strip cuts up there, and in the area we were, that they were even all old. There wasn't really much for recent cuttings, but we did take a ride over towards like the zone four. Yeah. Once you cross into zone four, there's a lot more. Yeah, clear right, cut right on that line. There, there were some cuts. Yep, but I like that zone. It's kind of hilly. More mountainous and a lot of swamp, a lot of lowland, big giant swamps, and it's good country. I mean, it produ- produces some older class moose, I think. So. Yeah, Clearly, I like, I like <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. at least for deer, I like the rolling hills, and yeah. swamps. Yeah, I was gonna say that sounds like a good deer area. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we there were there were some deer yeah. up there, we saw we only saw one, but we saw tracks. It's just the winter in areas up there got hit, and there's a lot of coyotes. I'm sure in that area. Well, but. we were driving down the road, saw a coyote. We yep. looked out, tried to get a get a pop shot yep. at it but it just didn't happen <laughs> but, yeah. we heard them howling every night yep. behind our little wall tent they <laughs> yeah yeah they'd wake us out in the middle of the night howling but. yeah that that was didn't come in they wouldn't come in no they wouldn't come in no no that was definitely you know out of all the hunts i've had in my life i've had a lot of memorable hunts you know with my kid and with other people's with the youths and stuff but something about that hunt man that was yeah just the way it all happened yeah that was cool yep that was a lot of fun. Couldn't draw it up. No way. Much when are you better. Guys, uh, releasing that bill. Uh, so we're gonna put it in the. Uh, Don't film, have to say, but yeah, we're, just, we're gonna put it in the <laughs> film festival at Hunt Stock. So oh, nice. Yep. We are submitting that, so we're gonna hold off on it. Um, cool. Still some editing to do, but. Uh, It'll be exciting. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's gonna be. You know, I'm still pretty new to the whole editing scene. I, you know, I yeah. don't have oh, the. Yeah. The high high tech software, but I I just like to tell the stories about it. So it's like I enjoy putting it all together, and we have hours upon hours upon hours of footage. So yeah, there's there's a good backstory to the whole thing, and and uh, I think it's gonna make a pretty good story. Whether yeah. it makes the top ten or top three or whatever, I don't care as long as people get to enjoy it and see it. Yep. Obviously, if it makes it, 
be awesome. But I mean, I've yeah. seen you work before. I, I think. <laughs> yeah, he's not giving himself he enough well. credit. He does. <laughs> he does pretty good job. I know. I was actually watching your videos on YouTube. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. yeah, I think this one we get some new lot. cameras for this one, and I think it's gonna. I think people are yeah. gonna like it. It's, it's funny. It's like the little stuff that you don't think about. Like I, I got the road my uh, wireless mics and stuff, and like the drone footage and stuff like that. Every, everything that you can kind of tie in together. It's like yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah, it, it, it is, and I mean, you have the ups and the downs, and you have the disappointments, which <laughs> that's the whole part of the story that's as well. But. Uh, and you want people to see that. Yeah, it's, yeah. It tells I mean, us, yeah, there's, part of the story. yeah, there's screw-ups that happen, and and you deal with it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I remember as a kid, like, watching these fun videos where, like, they'd always go out and get something. Right. Like, are always successful. You yep. know, perfect. But it's nice to see, like, the stuff that actually happens in real life. Yep. Yeah. I, I will say that I am fortunate that we had more than one camera going. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, yep. that's... That's that, and uh, yeah, no, we're excited to put it out, and, and hopefully people enjoy it as much as, as we enjoyed the hunt. I mean, we couldn't have asked for a better personal hunt, like up close, personal, just enjoy the actual North Main Woods, you know, trying to track one down, trying to get through the woods, um, the calling sequences. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, really wanted to, I really wanted to get it in real, get one close. I brought... My only gun I brought was my uh, Marlin Trapper with the peep sight, so I was planning I on... You do that on purpose. Oh, I did do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. pretty wrong. The only one I brought us. The only gun, yeah, I wanted, to, I, wanted, I, wanted, I wanted to be up close and personal and yeah. fun. I didn't want to, sh you know, shoot a moose at... Not to say anything wrong with it, but I didn't want to shoot a moose at 300 yards across the clear cut. I wanted to I wanted call to him in close. Boat. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Oh, would be nice. That was, that was my intent when I got, I, I got drawn a couple years ago, and that was my intent, and... You know, back to what we were talking about earlier, you know, when you are on a hunt, sometimes you feel like you're hunting for somebody else, you know. Yeah, yeah. I have all these people that took time off to come right. out and, and hunt with me. Pressure on yeah, that's a lot yeah of pressure. so it, it was a pressure of, you know, my parents were out there and, you know, they're getting out there in age and this, I may never have that opportunity again to have them out there with me. So it's right. like, I started off the, the day with a bow and went two days into it and finally, you know, my dad gave me a little bit of crap. He's like, put that thing away. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. take your rifle out. So <laughs> messing around. <laughs> you know, and and I I did appreciate the people up there that were helping me out, so I wanted to make it happen. So yeah. you know, we we did end up putting the bow away and we, we called one into thirty yards and made a good shot on it and had had a great great time doing it. You know, quartered that up and packed it out. Had a little bit yeah. of a pack, nothing crazy, but it there is pressure. It is funny. There is a weird pressure yeah. that puts. It's not on. It's you. You feel it because everyone else is there, and you're like, oh, you don't want to waste their time, right? Like, like I, when I had you come up to film the whole thing, it's like if he takes ten days off, and we don't even get a moose on film, you know? Because I wanted a particular <laughs> moose. Like, right, right. I was hunting. You know, I didn't want to shoot a smaller moose, so I was hunting for a big moose. And you, you after the first couple of days, we hadn't seen a bull yet. And you, you. you start to feel some pressure like, oh well maybe this we had the conversations of like you know what are your standards now like what are you what are you dropping down to well oh, geez i don't know <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. yes i mean you're hauling the camera gear and all that stuff, right so it's, yeah it's an extra yeah an extra stress almost, yeah because yeah we had i still had a lot of confidence that we were going to make it happen but yeah. you never know that's hunting you so. worried about getting the camera away you worried about oh yeah the right. life. you worried about all yep. that other stuff yeah, well, and, and the thing, too, is, like, you know, we saw a pretty decent moose on... Sunday? Yeah, Sunday. Or, yeah, Sunday. We were scouting, yeah. We were scouting, and it was actually a moose that Jameson had seen when he went up in August yep. to well, scout. Yep. So we saw that moose, and, you know, we get this this thing in our head, like, oh, that's that's the destiny bull. You know, yeah. you saw that moose already in August scouting. Yeah, we saw him again. And we like, saw him again. So like, odds, right? yeah, yeah. He was four miles away from where I saw him in August. Yeah. So we're like, you know, that's the moose. But then when, when Monday came, we didn't hunt anywhere near <laughs> when we saw that moose because yeah, yeah. he's like... We were bouncing, yeah. Yeah, he's like, you know, yeah, it's a good moose, but it's not really the moose that I'm looking for. Yeah. yeah. So, which I'm I'm glad that we didn't. Yeah. He was a good bull. He was probably like a 40-something inch bull. Yeah, mid-40s probably. Yeah. Probably like a four. Yeah. Four-year-old, three-year-old-ish. Good bull, but we were looking for something a little better. I mean, before we went up, you even said, you know... I want something with age. I want something that's been around. 
Yeah. I mean, obviously, you didn't plan on shooting a 13 and a half year old. No. <laughs> no, it's just how it happened. But I was gonna say, yeah, the one you got. Like, yeah. yeah. Yep. Cool ball. A lot of character. Awesome. Yeah. I think, he, I think he'd gone downhill. His rack actually had gone quite a way. He's got small paddles, but yeah, just a lot of character. Cool junk. I wouldn't trade him for. No way. I mean, he he's not a mastic bowl or anything like that, you know. But I wouldn't trade him for a. It's yeah. kind of like when you see those real old bucks in there. They're really there's so much mass, but they're yeah. tight. Yeah. It's like yeah. I would rather shoot that than a wide spindly yeah. young buck any day yeah. mm -hmm. but it's funny too because when when you get up into the into the county there whoop, the, you're talking about the store yeah. in ashland we yeah were, the store in ashland has a shed. gateway gateway i think it's called or yeah something. they have a shed there and it's like it's a gnarly move shed and it's got you know crap off the back a lot like that and i remember when we went in before we got to go in to set up and stuff we stopped at the store got the last few things or whatever and he picks up the shed. He's like, this right here. This is what I'm looking for. This is what I want. <laughs> yeah. And then, sure as shit, we freaking go hunt. Yeah. And yeah. he ends up getting this gnarly freaking moose. Yeah, it's, like, it's actually pretty similar. Yeah. Like, the shed and that moose. And it's like, how do you, like, did you're manifesting this. You pick this <laughs> yeah, thing up, right. you hold it, you rub it like a genie lamp, and you're like, <laughs> this is what I'm going to get. No, I believe in that stuff, though. Like, just believing in. Yeah. If you want something to happen, you have to believe in it. You can't doubt. That's how you keep the ball rolling into the next thing that I mean, leads I, you into that. Yeah, right. That's You're tracking. Right. Scouted. Yeah, that's tracking. You have to believe. And Maine, and for me, it's just hunting in Maine. If I don't care if you stand hunt or you, are because I'm not afraid to say I'll sit somewhere for a week straight. I'll tell you that because I believe yeah. every day I'm closer to shooting a giant one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And. He's better that's, at sitting than me. That's, that's how I, I stay tracking too, though. Like I'm like, oh man, I've gone eight miles, yeah. and it's gonna get dark soon. But it could be just right over there, so I'm gonna keep going. Right. I think the good thing about tracking, though, is like you have something to look forward to. If you're on a track, you're like, you, you know, know, something's on the end of right. the track. Yeah, you know, there's a buck on the end of it. You know, yeah. sitting. Like, and that's what I do. I I stand hunt. Me and my father have stand hunted my entire life, so it's that's what I'm used to. But at, at the same time, it's like you know, I've walk to my stand in the snow seeing tracks and i go sit and i don't see anything and i'm like damn it i should have followed those weird. tracks <laughs> yeah. you know it's like part of you feels like you're wasting time but part of you feels like you never know so yeah. it's like it's it's hard it's a it's a hard thing to yeah when i'm sitting doubt always creeps into my mind yeah. like am i in the right spot and yeah. i have way more confidence if i'm on a track because like you like you said you know there's a big buck up there. oh yeah all you gotta do is catch up to him and get a shot at him yeah. but you just gotta have persistence yeah 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 both both aspects really yeah yeah right that's not easy to sit somewhere when it's 20 degrees there's oh. no snow on the ground and yeah. you're just like oh, oh, oh. that's way harder to me i think so too it that's is mental yeah. toughness. I mean, well you can get into the argument too like when you're sitting you've sat for three days and then you're like okay i'm gonna go still hunt while you're still hunting you're thinking about the buck's gonna yeah, come you were yeah. sitting at yeah yeah, yeah. And there, done that. It's all mental. Games. It's gonna mess it really with is. Yeah, it, it really is. is. That's that's one of the biggest things about having more than one stand to sit too. It's like you know, you you choose which stand you want to sit that morning. Sure enough, you know, if you have a cell camera or something that goes off, you're like, yeah, why? But yeah, I think cell cams mess a lot of people up. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I I bought a couple and it's like I like them because I don't have to disturb an area when I set them. That's the biggest thing. But at the same time, it's such a burden because then you're like, okay, that just went off, but I'm sitting at this stand. I'm going to scoot over there real quick to see if I can catch up to that deer. Or if you're not sitting at, you're sitting here on the stand, and that one goes off. It's just, yeah, it's it gets another discouraging. Thing, another thing with trail cameras is a lot of people get set on if they set the trail camera there and they don't have a lot of activity or a big buck. And they don't they think, think there's no big buck in there. Right. But that big buck could have been onto your scent already and knew yeah. you put that camera there and walked around right not saying he knows it takes a picture right but he smells your scent there doesn't want to go there yeah i yeah. think i think they know i mean whether they make a noise or a they use a plastic on a tree <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, I mean, they definitely notice there's them. just yeah. some type whether it's the energy that comes from it i don't know but like how often do you have pictures of bucks that are looking right at the camera yeah. you know they're out there smelling the it so you know they know it's there yeah. yeah so i believe in that energy thing too because i've been in a tree, like whether I'm hunting out of my saddle or my climber, I'd be way up. Never been there ever. Yeah. The deer would be like, right. Yeah. I'm like, 
Yeah. I didn't move at all. How yeah. did you know? <laughs> yeah. They got a sixth sense. There's a reason why they they survive Mother Nature. Hunters yeah. are a joke. We are a joke compared to Mother Nature. I mean, if those animals can survive in the wild. Yeah, that's what makes it fun. Yeah. I mean, they're, we they're, have they're to, the ultimate challenge. Yeah, we have to beat them in their element at their own game. Yeah. And not, not that it's a game, obviously. It's, you know, we hunt because it's a, a survival instinct that's been instilled in us, but it is a sport, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I think that's my main reason that I like to track is it's like you're playing chess all day. Yeah. Okay, well, you went here. I'm going to try to go around here so I can just look down and just see if you're still bedded there. Oh, no, you moved. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you were watching me while I was going around this way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's just the all day. Yeah, event. it keeps your mind more involved in the hunt. I get wandering. If I sit, my mind starts to wander, and you're not. I feel like you're not focused. It's so hard to focus all the time when you're sitting. Yeah. Right. Whereas when you're tracking, your brain's always. And that's that's the point of hunting, right? You want to be interactive yeah. in the hunt because you're trying to right. get the you world. Just left all your busy yeah. busy life. Right. When you are tracking, Jameson, mm-hmm. like what what is what is the main thing that you try to like focus on like if you see a track obviously you know like if they stop and they turn Mm -hmm. or if they're zigzagging you you understand like the movements and what they're doing like if they're browsing or whatever Mm -hmm. what it what it in your opinion what do you think is the main thing that you focus on while you're tracking i just want to know well age the track i want to know how far i am behind the deer and then i want to know what the deer is doing like what he's thinking and isn't what he's you know is he going to bed is he going is he feeding is he looking for does is he with doe you know just trying to figure out what that buck's doing and then you could just base what you're doing on that but yeah i guess that's the easiest way to put it yeah i've i've never really gotten into the big woods tracking i've just tracked around like obviously home area which is completely different because those deer <laughs> yeah they, they don't travel quite as far no it's the actually the, it's harder down here the one, because, well, obviously the property's so right. blocked up that there's places you can't go. And then the other, it's harder because there's actually there's more deer. The more deer there are, in it, it's actually harder to track because yeah. they just start getting in. It's they mixing base, with other deer. Barn and, and, the barn yeah. Barn the and in fact, the tracks are more uniform, too. Like, you do less of those big, giant tracks. Yeah. So, like, the tracks all kind of look they have less character. similar. Well, yeah, you like... You, get, you don't have, like you said, the square. Yeah, you don't have those giant yeah. square toed bucks as, or as many. Well, down yeah, because so. if you think about it, the majority of the deer around here are two and a half years old when they're shot. So it's like you don't get those older bucks around here. Yeah. So, and the country's softer, so they're not beating up their hooves. They don't, and so. down by us, like they don't have the winners that they need to be mm-hmm. 250 right. pound deer. Yeah. Like a big buck for us down in southern uh-huh. Maine is like 180 pounds. That's yeah. a big, big yeah. deer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You do get 200 pounders, but they're, it's like. Right, much rarer. Maybe yeah. up north, you get maybe one out of 10 would be a 200 pounder. Down there is like one out of 200. Right. Maybe. Yeah. And that's a guess, but yeah. it seems to be pretty close. It's, but I mean, it, that goes, like you said, that goes with the winters. You know, if you don't have a real hard winter, they don't have to pack on that weight. They don't have to try to sustain exactly. a, a heavy, heavy weight to, you know, be healthy or whatever. Uh, obviously, up north, when they're getting three, four feet of snow, and they have to yard up. They try to maintain as much as they can. But yeah, yeah. like the buck my father shot this year, he was I, I, he was six and a half or seven and a half. I can't remember exactly how old that was he was. A good buck. Yeah, he was a really nice buck. That was a flyer buck. Right? A flyer buck. Yeah. yeah, he called him the flyer buck. He had two pretty cool yeah. points coming off the back of his. I think it's G twos. Yeah. Wow. But uh, yeah, that buck was seven and a half. I shot him the I guess for end of the first week, maybe early second week, and that buck only weighed one hundred and seventy five pounds. Yeah. Your brother had those sheds at the at Huntstock last year, right? Yeah, he had his sheds from yeah. from the previous year. That's yeah. cool. cool too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the cooler part. Yeah, he had the cool. sheds. I'm thinking, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, I want to find them. It was really similar, like almost identical rack, yeah. from six to seven. So you don't think he lost anything? I'd have to look at the sheds. I can't. They were really similar. He might have lost. He might have gained yeah. a little. I don't. Yeah. They say like. Around eight, they really start to diminish, right? Yeah, like I think six. once, I think they're peak six, seven, yeah. eight. You're, yeah, after you get after eight, start they're starting to go area. downhill. I think yeah. it's deer dependent too. Right. I think some deer. Well, right, like genes. Yeah, nutrients or whatever that they. Oh eat. yeah, even down, like, of course I love the hunt up north, but I noticed down south because I have most of my experience down there, growing up down in southern Maine, even down there. There's certain areas that produce bigger bucks. 
rack wise. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they'll all be generally around the same weights, but some areas like they shoot a lot of huge bucks over there. Why? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So then I'd be walking around like, okay, well they just have a lot of diversity yeah. in this area compared yeah. to the other areas. It's either good habitat or it could be like a difference in hunting pressure too. Like, I think that maybe one area of town they just don't live well, long enough to. I looked into some records because I, I just like researching that kind of stuff. And what I found is the minerals, if it's a, a high mineral area, mm-hmm. it obviously it seems like the, the right. better racks. Because I was trying to explain, I'm like, why is there better rack bucks coming from this yeah. particular county yep. versus this county? And if you look, they have a better mineral in their ground. I bet if you look back yeah. into it too, like a lot of those high mineral areas are probably like old farmlands. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Stuff yeah, that... Yeah that were really nutrient rich at one point because they fertilize it a lot and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm. You know. And the gem quarries, even around there, they have bigger rack bucks. Yeah. yeah. It sounds weird, but it makes well, sense though. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's funny. You see like, they, they say like, if you shoot a deer and you leave a gut pile, deer can come along and they'll actually lick a gut pile because of the minerals that's in that yeah. gut pile. Yeah. So they, they're getting the nutrients back out of it. Mm-hmm. Which it's wild. Are, yeah. I mean, generally the the first thing that hits hits a gut pile could be another deer. Yeah. So you never know. I mean they they try to get as much nutrients as they can. I mean I've my dog eats dirt, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I'm, I'm sure deer do the I mean, same thing. My kids thing. do too. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You, you gotta get the Maybe nutrients. Maybe they'll be real, real tall, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Be a good question for a geologist. If you're yeah. An right. Expert in geology in Maine, you could be like, oh, which areas have the best Minerals, you know. Yeah, we'll I mean, go deer hunt over there. Yeah, yeah this is northern Maine, so I know where it's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, down obviously towards your home. I mean, mm-hmm. when your father and your brother, because they they don't go up and track with you, obviously. But right. when, when they shoot the deer around home, are they generally in you know the oaks or the hardwoods? Are they in food plots or like beach or? Mm, you no, know, they're all over. But we definitely we do have a lot of oak. Right down so, around us, so but getting all that the acorn nutrients and stuff. For yeah, the most part. I think it's a, it's an age class thing too because yeah. we live pretty close to a pretty <laughs> large game preserve. So you get some butts that will travel off of there, and they just have a chance to live a little older. Yeah. Whereas yeah, maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe the other end of town is less older bucks because right. they have less places to hide from hunting pressure. So yeah, yeah, it's it's funny because we're like where me and my father hunt. It's a big parcel of property but all the deer seem to be the same you know what i mean there's not a huge indifference in what they look like yeah for some stupid reason a lot of the bucks lack brow tines you know we don't have brow tines that grow for some stupid reason um i've got two on the wall one has one another one has none my father has one on the wall that doesn't have any and it's like you know, I don't know if it's just a genetic thing that is there yeah. or if it's just lack of nutrients but once in a while, you'll get get a stray that might come through that is just a phenomenal buck. But for the most part, they're all you know your typical main eight pointers or ten pointers or whatever. But um, basically, up there, we have a lot of beech, we have a lot of oak. I've also heard that like a lot of the antlers on a buck has a lot to do with the doe. So I think if you if you if you have an area for a while, maybe especially if you don't shoot the does and you have a family group of does that live for for you know ten fifteen years, like all that stretch all the the bucks at that doe mothers they're all going to be have similar genetics so you might have a long run you might have a long run of bucks that all have similar genetics so that makes sense if you shot all the does out and maybe some new does moved in you might have a whole different Batch of antler genetics. Yeah, yeah it makes. Sense. Why yeah. they just turn me into a so, dog? Yeah, if you don't, maybe. Yeah, maybe if you don't like the genetics in your area, maybe, maybe like time Pretty to start smart. shooting some does. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just. <laughs> it makes sense, though. I mean, it, and like you say that we have a giant like She's group probably, of does that you probably had them forever. Yeah, and because me and my father, we don't we don't we don't shoot the does. Shoot the does. So you're probably so. readable, and they can live <laughs> twenty years. Yeah, and then the mother doe. If she, she's passing her genetics to those, if those does don't leave, if they just stay where they grew up, I mean, you're going to have right. the same, even when that doe's gone, you're going to have the same genetics. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It might be time to go in and whack some doe. That makes, I mean, that's, that makes even, sense. Even yeah. if you shot yeah. every doe yeah. off your Look property. Us, right? Yeah. We're half our mothers. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. So that's why right. wouldn't they be? Yeah. yeah. And for some reason, I've, I've heard, I don't know how true it is. I'm not a biologist, yeah, but 
that a lot of the influence on a buck's antlers is actually more from its mother than its father. Yeah. How true that is, I'm not sure, but yeah. I've heard. You know it's at least 50, probably 50%. I don't know, every time you go hunting and you see it. Uh, buck that's just like all spinning like i gotta shoot you yeah. <laughs> yeah so if, if you really like the antlers and the eggs in your area <laughs> maybe the don't shoot the does <laughs> yeah. but if you don't like them it might be time it's time for some to shoot some does yeah. well like he was saying if, uh as far as like us humans yeah our dad's five foot eight and we're both like six two yeah yeah six one six two yeah. so and our grandfather was the same way but on our mom's side they're all huge yeah, they're, they're huge. all over six feet yeah, yeah. or most of them most yeah. of them yeah it's i've never really thought of that mm -hmm. and it makes sense and it does now that, now that they change the whole doe tag thing in the state of maine maybe i will <laughs> yeah, add a couple yeah. more does even and, if you shot every doe you had off your oh obviously you don't have enough tags but if you had friends come in and you right. yeah i mean if it's good property good habitat those are going to move in from away right, right they're just going to fill it right back in yeah. and if you need help shooting those i'm here <laughs> <laughs> well, well, and, and that's the thing too it's like i've always been nervous it's like I go out with my bow and it's like, you know, I get a, a doe tag for my bow. It's like, I might as well just take a doe. But at the same time, it's like, man, I don't want to get rid of the doe population. But, you know, obviously after listening to that, that makes a lot of sense. And I actually think it makes the buck hunting a little easier. If you have too many does on a property, oh, right. it, it makes the buck because there's right. no competition. Right. Yeah, they can just lay down all day, wait till it gets dark. They got another one do the same thing, thing, right? Yeah, you want it. The closer <laughs> the ratio you have buck to doe, the more rut activity you're going to see. That's what I... Well, and that makes sense too because i don't see crap during right i don't see crap we like, gotta come to justin's let's let's have, have a go party yeah don't again don't 2024 yeah, yeah. <laughs> sounds like a plan yeah, yeah. Got kids you know what? Too, so let's yeah. Get out of here. right <laughs> if you think about it the midwest they've done that forever right yeah. and now that's why they have such great rattling and stuff going yeah. on out yeah there. yeah because it's tight like right. you said and i think that's why I've actually had the most success calling in northern Maine. Yeah, it's the ratio is closer here. Yeah, yeah. Or you know, southern Maine where we're from. Yeah, it's not. No. Yeah. You can call, so you wear the readout on that thing. Yeah, Nothing's yeah. Coming. I'll but, call a bunch of small bucks in, but I've never. I've, yeah. I've called a couple of decent bucks in, but for the most part, I've never really. And I'm not a huge fan of the whole bleak can thing either. But like, like you said, if if you have a grunt call and there's you know ten does to one buck. It's well, not competition, so why yeah. would I even? I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna fight for that doe. Right. I mean, I don't need yeah. to. Right, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. If there's yeah, if there's one hot doe in hundred acres, and there's you know a couple bucks, that that grunt call might work a lot better. But well, yeah. then like in southern Maine, when you see a buck, it's usually first light, last light. Yeah, yeah. Up north, I can see him anytime. Oh, anytime. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That shows you right there. They're traveling to find the does. Right. Because it's that tight, and there's other bucks looking for does. Yeah. Down here, they're just like, ah, oh, there's 20 does over there. Right. You know, That's, and I'll just yeah push them into the swamp when I need the next one. It's I, I had to go down to Portland to find my wife, so I. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> there's yeah. more down. There's more does down there. <laughs> yeah, and probably too, along with the whole line of things, like if if you have a high doe population and a few bucks, it makes the bucks more nocturnal. Right, because they don't have to chase down the day and try right. to get those does. Yeah, that, that's, that's, make, yeah, that's a better way of saying what I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah, I really believe that. Yeah. Oh, it's true, definitely. That's why terrain traps and stuff for sitters up north yeah. work better. Right. Yeah, they have to travel further yeah. to find does, so yep, they're mo they're moving more, which means they're moving more during the day too. I mean, I watched the channel Just Hunt Club. Yeah, that's yeah. their whole game. Yeah, yeah, I just sit and yeah. they shoot some giants. Oh yeah, you got to put your homework in if you're going to hunt yeah. that way. Yeah, but. Was it that seven day, all day set? That's all, that's all day set for. Was it seven days? They did seven or eight. Yeah, the yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Those, those are fun. I can't do it, but. Well, okay. while we're on deer, I wanted to because I put out a questionnaire on yeah. Instagram. Mitch Donor. Oh um, yeah, oh Mitch. Yeah. <laughs> He's supported us a long time. Yeah, good guy. He's asked. Uh, he lives right up the road, actually. Oh really? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, Mitch, we're coming to you next. Right. <laughs> He's got some good stories. Oh, man. Let me tell you. If, you, were hungry. if you want to sit down and get a good laugh, that is the guy you want to talk to about yeah. hunting because he will. Man. He's got funny stories. I yeah. met him at Huntstock, but it was pretty brief. Yeah. yeah. I mean, our visit to Huntstock was pretty cool yeah. this year. But. Anyway, he said, uh, what if any new strategies or focus will you be utilizing next year, season? New strategies. You want to start? So this coming deer season, I'm going to try to focus a whole lot on my dad. Yep. I don't, 
I don't know if I'm even going to touch a rifle in the beginning. Uh, I think I want to go sit with my dad. He has pretty good luck the first week or second week. Um, past three or four years, he shot one either the first or second week. So, obviously, being in the filming aspect of things, yeah, that'd be cool. I think my my biggest focus this year is I want to I want to try to get set up with him and get him on video because I've never you know I've never filmed him shooting one. So, yeah. honestly, as far as the hunting aspect goes, it's going to be on other people this year. Whether I get one or not doesn't really matter to me. Um, my kid wants to start hunting. He's he's just turning five, but he's he's a friggin' marksman. They yeah. got him shooting the two two three and the four ten, and he's he's doing really well. So he's pretty pumped for turkey season and for deer season. So if I can get him on a doe and try to focus on other people this year, I think is my that's my biggest tactic as far as my personal season goes yeah. for sure. I think that's a good. Good one. Yeah, yeah. So you, you sure you're gonna come film me, right? <laughs> hey, honestly, I'm like, <laughs> to the point where it's like, yeah, I enjoy I enjoy shooting bucks, but at the same time, it's yeah. like I yeah. really enjoy seeing the joy in other people and seeing you know the excitement for everybody else. So, yeah, I mean, sure, yeah, sweet. <laughs> nope. Uh, for me, a lot of it's gonna be the same. Focus on tracking, but uh, I wanna, I really wanna. Uh, forced myself to film this year. Yeah. I mean, I wanted to do it last year. I had the GoPro set up and all that. And of course, the day I shot my buck, it was a snowstorm. And I didn't, was like, I'm not, I don't want to mess with the camera because it was snowing so hard and it was going to freeze up and get covered in snow. So I yeah. left it in the truck. And of course, I shot a nice buck at 15 yards. So I'm like, oh, of course. I mean, that's like I was saying earlier. It's, it's kind of a distraction. It is a distraction. It takes a little bit, takes a little bit away of, the, of being in the yeah, and I'm a hunter first, and that's what I love to do. So the filming's like it's secondary to me, but yeah. I really want to, you know, help Justin out and get stuff for him. And I think the filming's cool because you can show your kids and your family, and every, everyone yeah, else gets exactly. to see what you do. And that and that's the biggest thing for me is like you know, when the time comes, God forbid, you know, my 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 dad's gone, or when I'm gone, you know, my kid still has that to look back on. Yeah. You know, yeah. so that's like, I think that's a part. That's the biggest reason why I started filming. Yeah, the follows are cool, the likes are cool, whatever. You know, we all want to have that, you know, the Insta famous stuff or whatever. <laughs> but when it when it comes down to it, you know, I think my biggest thing is having the ability to let my children see that when I'm gone. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, your followers aren't showing up to your to no your funeral. Right. Your kids are. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, that's my biggest thing. And, and and same with Jameson. You know, like following him on his moose hunt. You know, that's something that he's gonna be able to relive you know mm. he has it in his mind and i do too and same with jordan and tim but, but that fades the longer yeah away. i mean you remember key parts but mm, i'm right. sure we'll go back and watch the video and i'll be like oh yeah i right. remember, remember when that happened yeah. and yeah you know so, social media can be the absolute devil yeah. but at the same time it you know it can help yeah. you know bring that stuff back yeah. you know? i think it's the community part of social media is the best part yeah. i mean you get to meet people on there that yeah, like you, you guys, would have never mean, met you guys. Right, right. You know, yeah, I was we, thinking that the other day. Like, yeah. I wouldn't met all these cool guys. Right. Yeah, I have a lot of friends. That, and that's the coolest thing about the hunting community is like a lot of people don't have that. You know, a lot of people don't have a hobby that actually brings them closer to people who are like minded. Right. You know, and whether it's hunting or just sitting around shooting the shit about life in general. You know, when we were at Huntstock, I talked to John Altman for at least an hour about everything right. other than hunting. You yeah. know what I mean? And and they're an upstanding group that, uh, you know, they put out great content, but aside from the content they put out, they're just good human beings. Yeah. Right? You know what and I that's mean? the people you want to surround yourself with. Yeah. Yep. So, I yeah. think most most hunters are good people, too, it seems like. Yeah. yeah. I haven't met yeah. too many true hunters, hunters that are... True hunters. You get yeah, the, true you, hunters. You yeah. run into Yahoo's. Yeah, you get the occasion. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's the Yahoo's, but you can tell real quick. Yeah. Who, yeah, you can. Who them guys are. Yeah. But, yeah. Most, or just in it, too. Yeah, yeah. the hardcore guys are all seem to be we're all pretty good yeah. guys we're all cut from the same cloth pretty much yeah. yeah going back to like the question that mitch asked like tactics and stuff i mean he he has gotten so into hunting the past few years mm. like he's really done he just got his mount back from north uh from uh I saw that. ryan rhodes ryan rhodes yeah. and that's a beautiful five pointer. I mean, you don't see five pointer. No, like that. I shoot and that thing every season. Yeah, that thing weighs. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what it <laughs> weighed. I, I know he that's told like me. I know he told me, but I, my mind is about. Yeah, it. That's hard to remember numbers. Yeah. But uh, he, uh, 
I give Mitch a lot of credit. You know, he volunteered at Huntstock last year. The yeah. guy, he drove down there just to volunteer. That's what I thought about wow. Yeah, he, he, he volunteered. He loved every second of it. He hung out with us for a while. And I've known Mitch. He was actually my, I went to Erskine Academy, which Mitch did too. And he was my uh, Erskine Eagles summer camp basketball coach there. So I've known Mitch a long time. But, but it's funny to go from him coaching me as a kid yeah. to, you know, now he's asking us questions and stuff. So yeah, it's, it, cool. it's cool to see how life evolves and, and him and right. <laughs> yeah, him and his brother, it is. you know, they posted a video there last year where I think it was his brother shot his first archery buck and it was a beautiful buck. And, you know, it's just, it's cool seeing the bond that you can have in the woods with family, friends, whatever it is, you know, hunting, hunting is a unique thing that really does bring people together for sure. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. on, on his moose hunt, we were up there for a grown man standing around a giant dead moose and we're all just like tearing up because of the way it happened and the circumstances of you know the the previous year of things that happened just in life in general and we were all fortunate to be there yeah and you know to to have four grown men standing around a moose with tears in their eyes it's you know some people like oh that's ridiculous but you just you don't get those emotions from just anything well well, it's primal right yeah Yeah. and life goes by life goes by so fast we're all wicked busy so it's not very often that we all get to take a week off and go do something like that and yep. that's really all we're thinking about right i mean we're worried about what's going on at home but it's not very often you just drop everything and we're all up there in the woods and yeah. we have a mission but at the same time we're having a good time while we're doing it so it's kind of like that's what we enjoy about doing the podcast like, right i mean i work i have odd days off like sunday is my only day off and, yeah but it's just nice to come up and, and meet with you guys and yeah yeah like-minded people like you were saying yeah yeah and it's enjoyable. Yeah, and you can get that a lot in the hunting community. I mean, yeah. you know, we could have totally different views on life, but at the same time, just the hunting thing just it yeah. just brings people together. It's cool. Yeah. I mean, Huntstock is a is a perfect example of it. Yeah. I mean, you can go to Huntstock and talk from people talk to people from all over. Yeah. Right. And it's like you've known them forever. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's guys that go there that strictly bow hunt. Right. But they're still talking to the guys that are trackers. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Hunsuck, that was great. Yeah, talking to everybody. I'm really looking forward to, to this year. It's going to be a lot of fun. And, I'm know. hoping we get to go and have a 10. Hey, I hope you do too. Yeah. All right, I say 10. Everyone's like, you say 10. I'm like, all right, well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, booth. A booth. All right. We yeah. had a 10. We're not we're professional. We had a 10 with walls on it. That's what it was. <laughs> yep. And thank God we had the walls because, man, did it rain that first couple that first night it poured hard oh that's right it did yeah, yeah we were gonna set we had brought my wall tent up we were gonna set that up and sleep in it but it was raining so hard we just slept in the cargo trailer and then we're, the second day we were like yeah ah, we'll just keep sleeping in the I cargo think, trailer yeah. i think that's what if we do it this year man i think honestly it worked it was good. pretty good for yeah i don't yeah. know who's gonna be going with us this year yeah. how many guys will have but i mean we had to haul the stuff down the trailer anyway so why set up the tent to sleep in that and yep no. I mean, if you got spare beds, let me know. Hey, it's <laughs> a sixteen-foot trailer. We could probably squeeze. Just them. put you bring a tent yeah. and set it right up beside the trailer. Yeah. They make it one of those Cabela showers or whatever they have. Yeah, go outside. Well, they have the showers there. They yeah, they have, have the, Yeah, they have showers yeah. there. They have showers there. Yeah. Sorry, Pat, you could have told me that. Yeah, they did a trailer. They did showers, right? Uh, yeah, they they brought it in a trailer and it had two showers in it. Well, yeah. that was my biggest thing about having a camper. I'm like, yeah, no, it was pretty sweet setup. I, mean, nope. I can go take you know go to the bathroom and road or something. Right. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. No a shower or something. Like yeah, you want to. I mean, it's not too bad of a haul down there. Would it take? It took us like four hours to get there. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are a little closer than us, so. About an hour. About three. Yeah. yeah. No, they they did a really good job down there. I was impressed with how how the turnout was, and you know, obviously it was our first time there, and it was only the second year they'd done it, anyways. But from everybody that we talked to, they said that it it blew up pretty well from the first year to the second year, and so I'm pretty. It'll be bigger this year. Pretty curious sure. to see how well it goes this year. So. Yep. But no, Pat and Pat, they, they do a great job. You know, yeah, I know. I that farm's it. great too. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. Like a cool place for it. And it's kind of unexpected. You know, pull in there. Oh, you pull in there and you're like, whoa, this guy's cool. And <laughs> that's cool. And the owners are great yeah, people. I was just going to say, they, they came around, you know, they checked on us and asked how things were going, asked if we needed anything, you know, and they were just out there enjoying their time, just to make sure, you know, people kind of keep their cool. They, had a little bit of rowdiness there one night. But. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, they were telling us about that. Yeah, that's right. but they handled that. And I wasn't there. <laughs> there was some. There was some. Tent, there was some tents blowing around uh, the one windy day there. Yeah, we had yeah. to find some stakes. Our neighbor's tent was blown away. 
we were fortunate. We were, they put us right up against the fence, which Pat, if you listen to this podcast, please put us back in the same spot. Cause that was perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's um, a good spot. But uh, yeah, they put us right up against the, uh, the fence there. We, we were able to wrap some rope around that. And so we had no issues with our tent at all. We're hoping to do a little bit of upgrading this year. Maybe, maybe get a TV set up and have, have some videos rolling or whatever, but yep. we'll see. We'll see how things go. Yep. Nice. Yeah, we definitely put, you know, you put a lot into it going to Huntstock. Yeah. Just getting all the gear together and yep. all that stuff. And then it seemed, sometimes it can seem like, well, it's, it's easy to just set up and whatever. But it's a lot of planning. Yeah. Time off. Yeah, it's a little bit of work. Sometimes you're cutting into your hunting time to, right. to do it. So. Yeah, if you only have so much vacation time, I mean, you got to take, that's thir- was it Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. Or something. Right. It's a, that's, it's that's a commitment. At, so. It's a commitment. Yeah. We, we kind of just threw it together last year and, and it worked out great for us. Um, obviously we didn't know what to expect, you know, it's the first time we've ever done it or anything like that. And we're, we're still really new to the whole filming and, and Instagram thing. So, um, we, we did build some followers down there, which is awesome. Met some really cool people. Um, I will say it's hard when you do have a tent to go out and actually Mm. check stuff out and listen to the seminars and stuff like that. Yeah. I didn't go to any seminars. You know, part of me wants to go to New York just to be able to do that. Right. Not That's set up experience. a booth and just listen and learn and then go to mass and then yeah. set up a booth or whatever. Yeah. But we'll see, you know, with two kids and a wife at home, it's it's That's hard true. to. <laughs> we were grateful for Timmy and Mark Woodman, and yeah. all those guys to, to let us put our stuff there last year because my wife gets sick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, totally unexpected. Those guys, I mean, if you don't follow, I mean, I don't know anybody that doesn't follow them. But yeah don't follow them or yeah. Yeah. get their stuff I yeah mean, genuine good people i i asked them and they're like you don't even have to ask you should have just put your stuff here i'm like right and they let us go enjoy the show because they knew the stuff that we had going on yeah they let us go enjoy the show and they even did all the stuff with like selling shirts or whatever else we had yeah hats yep and they just came back they would find me somewhere and and bring me whatever that, that we made yep yeah yeah Good guys. So, yeah, can't say that's, enough. Can't say and great hunters. muzzleloaders. Yeah, that's hunters right exactly. There. That's real yeah. hunters. Yep. A, it is a community for sure. It's not just it's not just a cult or a group of people. It's a community. Yeah. And it's a small community too, really. I mean, the you know the hardcore guys, but I mean there's guys that just go do it and they don't say anything boo about it. But yep. as far as like us guys, we're a pretty small community. But it's funny to see the amount of people that showed up at Hunt Stock and the different variety. Oh people. yeah, the, yeah. You know, there's such a range of people that showed up there to check stuff out um, that you wouldn't really expect, and from the people that you know just stopped and talked to us, and you know shot the shit for a while or whatever, and it's just yeah. like it's cool just to talk to people about you know their experiences and, and what they want to accomplish, or you know people that I've never met. And they're like, hey, yeah, I saw your video on YouTube. Isn't it's that like a weird. Thing? Yeah, it's like because like, 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 I don't. Like, like you said, I put it out for my family first yeah. of all, and then when people come up and, and say something, like, right, it's kind of yeah. weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> here I am, you know, four hours from my house, and I don't know a single person here, and they're like, "Yeah, we, we watch your stuff, and it's you know, that's it's cool. what makes it awesome." Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool to know that people are actually enjoying right. what you're putting out. Right. Yeah, makes it makes it worth it. Yeah, makes it work the work because it is work. Yeah, to make video podcasts. Right. People, you know, they, they're like, yeah, we like it because I thought about it, like, ah, it's a lot of work. Yeah, yep. it's an extra stress on the family. Yeah, but no, I appreciate it. it yeah, I appreciate you guys doing. It. I mean, that's that's what I, I don't watch a ton of YouTube videos. I do watch some, but yeah. podcasts are like my what I like to listen to the most. I have a lot of time sitting in the machine cutting wood all day <laughs> <Yeah>. by yourself, <laughs> yeah. so I can't listen to radio over and over. It's pretty yeah, old. Sports again. talk gets pretty old, so. What's for, Listen to hunting podcasts yeah, all day. It's fortunate for guys like us, too, because I, I own my own construction company, so it's like I can turn podcasts on and listen to it while I'm working. Same with you. It's like yeah. you don't have to worry about no. someone coming in to interrupt or whatever, Yeah, and you can listen to whatever you want. So it is it is nice to be able to listen to stuff like that, and, and you learn a lot from podcasts. And you know, Oh, I've learned, yeah, I've learned a ton listening to different, you know, hunting styles and different, yeah, different things you'd never think of. You're like, oh, yeah, I'll try that. And you put, it in, your, you put it in your rep- repertoire of yeah. stuff. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing, too, is, like, you hear podcasts from the Midwest all the time, which right. you can kind of relate to that, but at the same time, it's like, 
their style of hunting is totally different just because the terrain is different, the, the habitat's different, the deer are different. Right. Yeah. So population size. Yeah. So it's it's nice listening to like, you know, Hal on the Big, Big Woods Bucks podcast and stuff like that. And it's encouraging for people. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, I think it's cut the learning curve for new hunters. Yeah. Big yeah. time. Big yeah. time. I can't, if I had podcasts oh when God. I was like 13, you know, yeah, I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm the same way. He'll tell you, I listen to podcasts all the time. I'll be on my treadmill running. It's yeah. about tracking. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. don't know. Like, we had books. To yeah. Read, yeah. But when you're a kid, you don't read books. <laughs> no. I didn't read it all. No. <laughs> but now, just watch videos. The podcasts are they're so in depth, too, on a lot they of are. the strategies that, yeah. yeah. It cut, if you're just starting out, you can you can learn pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. And they give you a relate, like, to be more relatable. Like, you're putting the human aspect to that person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where, like, when I read the Benoit books and stuff, I'm like, oh, these guys are God. Yeah. Like, I can't right. ever be as good as that guy. Then you meet them. Yeah. But they're, just, well, they're, they're just a normal man. And yeah. Then, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, that's why we went to the seminars before there was podcasts, yeah. because that whole reason, I was like, I got to meet these guys. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say that, because I remember my dad growing up always talking about them. You know, like, he was up at tracking somewhere. Him and his buddy used to go up and just randomly track. You know, it's not something they did all the time, but... They'd go up and they'd see the Benoits in their bus. You know, yep. they'd come up in, in the main. And, and now you talk about the trackers nowadays. And my dad's like, who? Who? <laughs> yeah. the, all, only trackers I know are the Benoits. Right. And it's like, but that's, that was their culture. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's when tracking in Maine really started to pick up is, mm-hmm. is when they were here. And, and it's just funny to see how the generational people, like when we talk about how blood, you know, we know how and, and, and all those guys on the Big Woods Bucks. But... Berniers. Yeah. Just those three, the Berniers, Benoits, and Blood and Hell. Yeah. 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 It's just funny because we, we know that those names, but the older generation, when you talk about tracking, they just, it's Benoits. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they kind of started the, oh, there's people, there was obviously people doing it, but they, they kind of made it, First put it on the map about. more. Yeah. 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 Or be approached. They were Especially so, the Benoits. And they were so videos. good at it. Yeah. Yeah. The videos. Well, they really, yeah. really. The seminars they were wow. doing. And, yeah. Yeah. And I haven't asked, but I, I would, that's a good question to ask, Laney, but I think that they wouldn't have, would never have said anything. Right. Right. They, but they, they were, were being asked. Yeah. 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 Versus, you know, well, when you're, putting their own stuff out. When you're successful like that, obviously yeah. questions are going to start. <laughs> right, yeah. Like, you know, how, how do you do it? Or, or well, I think it was Larry. They shot three 200 pounders in three consecutive days. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. 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 I don't know anybody that's done that. Man, yeah. if and it's crazy too because you have social media nowadays, so you see the majority of the deer that are shot in the state throughout the season. Yeah. Obviously, I would never wish social media on those days <laughs> yeah. because those were the good days. Right. But I'd like to get rid of could, social media. Yeah. Could oh you could God. you imagine people would have on social media if it was around in those days and the deer that you would have seen like that people not necessarily didn't tag but tagged and didn't get talked about right. or. Man, it would be nice to see some of the giants that were shot those, back then. Yeah, or those giants that just fed families. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Be cool. Like but, we were talking earlier, our grandfather threw away his racks. Right. Yeah. And one of my friends, it's, it's, it's in his uh, late 60s, he, he's like, yeah, I had a bunch of antlers, but I threw them away. I was like, I wish I could have seen them. He's yeah. like, yeah, you met me like a year too late. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it's funny because in the Northeast, we're, we're like the only people that care about weight. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, the 200 pound club is non-existent in the Midwest. They don't care. Right. It's you know, it, it's just funny how just that little bit of travel. We're in the same country, but just yeah. that little bit of travel yeah. and mm-hmm. how drastically things change when it comes to the hunting aspect. Did yeah. you did you hear how that weight? I got just heard this on a podcast recently. I don't know whose it was, but they were talking about how that kind of got started. The whole weight thing in Maine or in the Northeast. I guess I was it was. Wondering that. It was from, I guess, from what I heard on this podcast. I, I wish I knew who said it. But I feel like I heard that podcast, too. Yeah, they were talking about how back in the days, <clears throat> the, they used to feed the logging camps oh, with I the deer meat. Too. Yeah, you heard it, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they, so they'd weigh the deer, and they'd get paid based on how much the deer weighed. So that's, oh, so that's okay. how like the weight became a big deal, because the heavier bucks sense. you shot, the more money you got paid. Gotcha. So that's kind of how the whole, because antlers didn't matter to them guys, because it, it can't eat antlers. Yeah. And that sounds and like... And taxidermy was so old in, like, the... Right, yeah. No, yeah, nobody so cared. the more money it was worth, right. the heavier it was, so... 
That's how that whole weight thing got started in Maine. I did hear that. Northeast. Like, yeah. I can't remember who it was. came from where you can't eat the horns. Can't right. eat the horn, yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah. that's how they fed the logging camps was moose, moose I and mean, deer and bear. Right. Even when we shoot a deer, how much away? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the yeah. first question you ask. Always. You don't ever ask how many points. Yeah. It's always how it's much away. It's changed some in the last, some I feel like it's changed a lot in the last 10 years. Yeah. Social media. And well, and before everyone was kind of like in their own little world. And now we see stuff from everywhere. We hear yeah. podcasts from everywhere. And then a lot of other, pl- out Midwest, you hear inches, inches, inches all the time. Right. Yeah. And that that starts to bleed into yeah. our culture, gotcha. too. But, Which, yeah. I mean... I like them both. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone wants to be in the book. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, like I say this all the time. Ago. I, I'd love just to track deer and shoot a 190-pound deer that had, like, 100 new giants for half. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care if I ever shot a 200-pounder. Right. If I kept shooting deer that were heavy and had huge racks, I'd just be happy. Yeah. It is a cool feeling, though, to, sh- to tip that scale over 200. Oh, it I, is. I shot a 206 and a 201, so I've, I've just barely tipped that scale twice, but it's, like, it's a cool feeling to uh, hit that mark that yeah, everybody I can't. tries I for, it. you know I what I mean? So, it's cool. Yep. I mean, you've got two over, right? A three. No, I just have one. I think I had two. No, I have two one ninety. I have two that were one ninety. Well, I have one ninety six, a one ninety five, and the two eighteen, and then all my other bucks were like yeah. one seventy. That thirteen was one ninety six, right? The, 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 the bow hole, bow hole bow bow buck. Buck. Yeah, was he was one ninety six on the last day of the season. Yeah. Oh yeah. So he was yeah. two hundred pounds. Oh yeah, he yeah. was definitely the one I got this year was the last week too, and he was one ninety five, and he didn't have a stitch of fat on him. Wow. But those are the ones so that lean. the fire to get in next year. Yeah. I'm going to get them early this year. When yeah. But it's so waiting. hard when you don't get the snow. You yeah, yeah. Because you you're planning all your time for that snow. Yeah. Yeah. And you're yeah. trying to predict. Like, yeah, it was kind of, it was a little frustrating this year. <laughs> yeah. I was the first two weeks of the year, we had good snow up Jackman Way when I was guiding. First day, right? First day we had yeah. snow. Right well, out of the gate. Time, right, right out of the gate we were tacking on a buck. We dogged a buck that day. Uh, didn't get, we got caught up to him jumping, but I didn't get him. Uh, yeah, and then so I guided those two weeks, and I bet I tracked. I bet we tracked at least eight, nine bucks that week. Those two weeks. Yeah. And then uh, the third week, I'm finally off hunting on my own, and it didn't snow. It all had melted by then. It didn't snow at all that week. I'm like, oh man. I was like, am I not gonna get to track on my own? But that fourth week, we finally got that snowstorm on uh, Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. I got my buck that day, but yeah. I like it's yeah. I was a little worried I wasn't gonna get to track, but yeah, I thought about the guiding thing, but I also am like, just want to get out there on myself. And yeah, it takes fun. a lot of time. It does. It's hard being away. That's the hard part too, is being. And I have a flexible job, so that makes it easier for me to yeah get away. Yeah. So, well, at the end of the day, too, you're getting paid to do it. Getting paid to do so it. It's like yep. it's not such a a burden on being away from the family. I mean, obviously, you still want to be with a family. But it whatever. makes sense to your family. Right. Exactly. I couldn't just go up there <laughs> for, the, like, for the whole right, month and deer hunt on my own. That'd <laughs> right. be a little harder to yeah, justify. Hey, I'm but yeah, if I'm sure getting, maybe. yeah, I'm getting paid. So yeah, that's yeah. that's why Jordan and I are taking our guides course <laughs> next weekend there. So yeah. we're hoping to get get licensed and try to make something of it. I don't think you'll have a problem. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be all right. I hope yeah. so. <laughs> we'll see. I, I mean. Even the even the good guides, some you know they they fail the first try, but yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, I'm not ashamed to say it. No. It's not the easiest test. I mean, parts parts of it aren't hard, uh, but they can get you up on. They can get you tricked up they on get, the oral. Yeah. They like the oral is the hardest part of the test. Yeah. But, yeah, I did the prep course for it, and I never. Had, I was like, man, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be guiding the whole time. I wanna be hunting, but then I was like, well, maybe I could do moose hunts. Right. Yeah. Keep my deer season for myself. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's our biggest thing is like, you know, I don't know how long he's gonna want to stick around and help me out with the Northeast traditions and stuff. But if oh, uh, <laughs> he's on his way. Out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can see it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, <laughs> when you said that, he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, if if we can stick with it, you know, obviously, eventually, that's our goal. Is we'd like to start, you know, our own thing or whatever, and. Yeah, and see where we can go with it. Hopefully, yeah, obviously, he has other commitments right now, which I'm not going to stray him from. But um, you, you never know if yeah. we, if we can get Jordan and I get our license, and and Jordan's wife has her guide's license too. So it's if we could get you know yeah. a friends and family thing kind of going, I think it'd be awesome. Yeah, the other guy on our moose hunt, Tim, it's yeah. going to be in the film. Tim, he's he's getting his guide's license this year too. Yeah. So a bunch of us. Yeah, 
So even if we just did a couple moose hunts or whatever, I think it'd be a, a lot of fun and offer filming, you know? Right. You know, that, that adds a whole other aus- aspect to it, so. Yeah. It's just an awesome time to be in the woods. Oh my, May, October in Maine. And, you feel uh, better after being in the beautiful. woods. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. it's gorgeous. It's just, yeah. it's good for you. It you is know, good you for know, you. you, yeah. It, it, it's a, a meditation of some sorts, for sure. Yeah, it rejuvenates your soul. Yeah. Yeah, it's, your, it's what we're naturally born to do. So. Right, right. Yeah, right. Get away from the, the fast-paced hustle bustle of stuff and just, you know, yeah, you have s- six days to make the hunt happen on a moose hunt, but it's like they happen so fast that you just, you try to cherish every little part of it. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, even the, even the bad stuff. When it was up there pouring rain and we, we were dumping water out of the... It's good memory. uh, it's memories, though. I know the wood stove was, was completely plump, full, of plump full of water. We didn't have it going because it was warm. Yeah. We woke up in the morning, it was just full of water. It's oh. those hiccups that make, make yeah, it that's funny. Though, yeah, exactly. Funny. I mean, that's part of the story. And if you can't hunt to tell a story, then. Yeah, it's, you know, it's different. Like if you're like, oh, I stayed in the lodge, they drove me out, right. I shot it. Right. And then we went back. There's not much right. memory. Which there. nothing, if that's your style, yeah. hey, have at it. But, you know, obviously for his hunt, hit, we wanted to be off-grid. We wanted to be in the backcountry and wanted to put some miles on. And I mean, me personally, I like a nice comfy camp. <laughs> <laughs> I like a good home-cooked meal. Oh, <laughs> like I, need, I, want, I want the stove. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I want everything. Hey, I think we... You ever stayed in a wall tent? Yeah. Have you, you ever stayed? Oh, oh, I, I think you, you do it's it. way comfier than you think it is. Yeah. It's way, it's, it's cozy. Cool. Yeah, that's see, that's my side. He'll tell you he's like Chris will sleep on the yeah. mountain in tent. It's cool. It's cool. I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. We that's, slept four of us. I love it. Yeah, we had a little tent set up for our kitchen area, and I mean we, we ate a nice cakes. kitchen. Tim, Tim's good. He's good a kitchen setter up. Oh man, good cook. Yeah, we ate good. Woke up in the morning and had breakfast and breakfast sandwiches, and oh. Tim's trying to like stuff me full of food. I'm like, <laughs> guy, we have to go walk miles. Yeah, I yeah. cannot just eat endless amounts. You of You want food. three breakfast sandwiches, yeah. Justin? <laughs> like, <laughs> have another one. That's not us. Yeah, really. <laughs> I'm 175 pounds, man. I can't just pile that food down. I'm going to be useless. But I mean, me and Jim are kind of guilty of you know sometimes getting out a little late, rolling into it. Yeah. You don't have to get up early to shoot deer. No, so. no, 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 you don't. Especially tracking, I feel yeah. like that's different. I do just because I'm so driven to do it right. that I'm, well, I'm, I'm. But you don't it's need in your to. Head, like, man, if I was here an hour earlier on this track, yeah. maybe you know yeah. I could have caught up to him before. Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. a little different. But yeah, depends when your snow's coming too. It definitely is a mentality. You know, you can go out there. I I used to work with a guy who I'd get discouraged because I wouldn't see anything. And he's a big time hunter and he shoots some really nice deer. And he was like, slow down, relax, yeah. smile, mm-hmm. and have fun. Right. Forget that you're hunting. Right. Just go out and be in the woods. Yeah. And that's when it's gonna happen. And you know, exactly. when I find myself getting discouraged because I'm I'm hunting too hard. You know, that's what kind I mean? of the point I was getting at. Like, yeah. You put it's kind of a pressure you put on yourself. Yeah. You're like, I gotta get up at five AM every day and get right. out there and just be out there in the dark and wait. Yeah, you burn yourself off quick doing. Yeah, that. yeah. So yeah. I, it's funny, you know, that sticks in the back of my mind because he, you know, he shoots a lot of deer and he was a very successful hunter and it, it does make a lot of sense, you know, when you start making it a job, yeah, instead of exactly. something that you enjoy doing. Yeah, why? It's a hobby. Yeah, it's so, our favorite hobby, but it's still a yeah, hobby. An expensive one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's yeah, not. Think about the fun <laughs> right. for the yeah. meat. You're like, oh, yeah. My wife just saw my uh, my my stand that I bought for my son for the uh, death grip stand. And she's like, oh, hmm. hunting's expensive, huh? I'm like, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but it's worth it, you know? Yeah. So it makes you happy, then. It's yeah. worth it. It's the only thing that really hey, like, some put people money into. Gamble. Yeah, yeah exactly. Some, that's their joy. Right. And yep. They're literally throwing money away. Yeah. So. At, least, at least with hunting, you know, we get a little bit of a return out of it. Whether it's you know, a trophy on the wall or just memories in general, you still get a return. Yeah. So it's worth it. Yeah. It's a healthy, it's a healthy habit. Yeah. As yeah. much unhealthier habits you could have. Oh, man. For sure. Yeah. It helps, <laughs> keep us, helps keep us a little, you know, in shape and sure. outside. And yeah. Mentally. Mentally, yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know. It is. It's just. <laughs> it's hunting. It really it's hunting. Yep. Anything you want to add, Chris? 
Uh, I should have got him a drink. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Man, yep. I don't know. We did half the talking before we even started, yeah, so it's hard. I know. That's what we were talking about when we went out to the Have you guys have any uh, deer that you want to go back? Like, you, you find any tracks that you thought, well, you yeah. go back around. Yeah, I got. Catch up to. Yeah, I got that big one that I saw when we were guiding, when I was guiding last year that got away. I'd like to see him again. Where exactly was that? <laughs> that was. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call that? Wiggle, bro? Wiggle? What's your license plate now? <laughs> what's that road over in range of the Amazon? <laughs> yeah. no yeah yeah no yeah i'd like to go after him and then i had a couple big bucks on camera in a spot i hunt that hopefully they'll be back around there next year so yeah i've got one that but, snuck away yeah i almost <laughs> like the ones that i don't even know about though you yeah. just cut off on a track somewhere you've never even been yeah. i love going into a spot i've never no experience with nothing you just, just right? oh yeah you don't know what you're going into and, yeah it's fun. It's but. hard in the area that we hunt. I think I'd have better luck shooting deer with my bow early season in the area that we hunt that I've had consistently on camera because come rut, they're gone. Yep. You know, and then other deer come in. So I think if, if I was to try to focus on a particular deer that we've had on camera over numerous years, I, I definitely got to do it during bow season because... Maybe it's the doe population. Maybe they're just like, hey, I can go check out all these other places, and I know I can come back and hit these does that are going to hang out here. I don't know. But yeah. for some reason, they just they don't hang around that area during during the rut, during rifle season. So I think if I were to try to focus on a particular deer, it's it's definitely going to have to be in bow, mm-hmm. bow season. But. Plus, jumping into a new area, it's like your mind's fresh. Yeah. You're picking up on everything. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you've been in there a few times, you're kind of taking it for granted yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I definitely like feel that way. Over here, well, so your mind's kind of like, uh, well, that's the thing too. Is you I end up going back to the same spot. Yeah, I've hunted, hunted that area yeah. my, my whole, I uh, hunted that area my whole life. So it's like I have particular stands that I like to sit. Which, granted, the deer do travel those areas, you know, for the most part. But at the same time, it's like if you get a stray buck that comes in that wants to check different spots. Yeah. Um, but it's just such a big area, you know. It's it's like a twenty five hundred acre piece that. The deer traveling so it's hard to pinpoint exactly where they are and there's only a handful of us that hunt I, I might see two hunters a year yeah so it's like yeah it's hard well where chris shot his this year i mean there's tons of people in there whether it's hikers or whatever else people just letting the dogs go through the woods right and that particular day nobody was in there yeah that's yeah. why i asked him i just did a, i did a little short video but because this year i wasn't really feeling the film thing cause right there too much going on yeah. i just wanted to get yeah. back to back to our normal family hunt yep. but yeah I, I was like how many people were in he's like i didn't see anybody it's raining rare no uh, <laughs> no no nope. but i just knew uh and nice overcast day yeah, yeah i just i just kind of had a feeling you know yeah I, yeah like, you gotta listen yeah. to yourself yeah yeah i told my dad my dad went with me and i was like i know where we're gonna go and i was a few towns over and when he told he told me that he shot one that i i was feeling good like and i was in the area where the kansas we were talking about that Kansas buck was living. And I was feeling like I was going to get him, but when Chris called me, that's what mattered to me more was going and being with him for that. Mm. For that, time. and we—that's what we always do. No matter, I could be on the biggest deer track of my life. You try deer, I'm done. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're the same way. The yeah. second my dad, if I hear my dad fire, I'm like, get yeah. on the camera and say, "Hey, dad, just shot. Come <laughs> down, check it out." And I'm yeah, there. that's like, awesome. It's so much fun to go see someone else's deer and help them get it out. Yeah. I prefer it more than me shooting. Isn't that funny? Saying, yeah. The yeah. older you get, yeah. the more, I don't know. That's We've weird. hunted with, with some selfish people before that, you know, you shoot a nice buck and they're, they're jealous or whatever else, or they're comparing their deer to yours or. Right. And that, that's the kind of people that we don't want to, we don't want to be around and yeah. hope that they uh, change yeah. that kind of aspect. Cause that's not what it's about. To right. Us. Mm-hmm. You guys, so not to get <laughs> completely off topic, but I got thinking about like next year's plans or whatever. Do you have people that run dogs for coyotes down your way at all? No, I've never seen anyone. So I think that plays a, a I don't want to say it plays a big part because obviously coyotes and deer interact daily. Um, but we have like where we hunt, there's a, a group of people that run dogs a lot yeah. with, with their, they run coyotes with dogs and, um, I don't know if that has changed the pattern of how the deer move up where we hunt or not. 
I think it, it's definitely helped the population. They shot like 16 coyotes out of there last year. So, yeah. wow. you know, it, it has helped the population. But at the same time, I wonder if it puts a different type of pressure on the deer. I'm sure the I'm sure the bucks don't, don't I'm sure they don't love it. Right. <laughs> yeah. That there's hounds right. running through there. But as long as they're not chasing them. It, yeah. yeah. I'm well, sure it bothers like, them a little bit, though. Uh, I mean, like, we, we hunt when we're bow hunting. Yeah in spots where people are letting the dogs run through the woods and stuff. And I think the deer, I don't know if they identify certain dogs or, or what it is, but they learn what's a threat and what's not. Right. Yeah. And I mean, they'll have people walk right by them. You can walk by a buck bedded yeah. Yeah, on the hiking trail. Yeah. Yeah. Bad, yeah, leash dogs, but hounds might be a little different. I'd be more, yeah, I mean, I'd be more worried about like bow season hunting than I would the rut. Cause as long as the does are still there, yeah. the buck, the buck should come along. But so, what it is is like a lot of the, whole, the landowners up there have talked to the people who run the dogs and they have an agreement you know come like august whatever they stop running the dogs yeah because yep. they don't want to interfere with the deer, with the deer. that um, makes sense yeah yeah so you know there's there was a little bit of a altercation for a little while because you know coyote hunters versus deer hunters they want to do their thing but at the same time, you know, they came to an agreement where we'll run it from this period of time to this period of time. Um, yeah. Because obviously, as we all know, it's that's a constant fight with the anti anti hunters, you yeah. know, trying to get rid of hunting coyotes in general. Yeah. That's why um, there's no wolves in Maine. You know, <laughs> I just saw a post <laughs> the other day that someone posted in Vermont <laughs> about some black wolf or whatever in Vermont. It's like, I don't know, the Eastern coyote, we all know that they're bigger. Yeah, and there's exactly. all kinds of different color phases. Yeah, and it's yeah. just, it's, yeah. I don't know. That's a whole other topic <laughs> that we ought to do another podcast on. But yeah, yeah. well, you know, <laughs> we, we don't need to be saying there's coyotes. I mean, there's wolves. You know, we don't need to say that. Yeah, no, because there is. Personally, I've never been killed. Yeah, <laughs> say personally, no. I've never seen one. I've been in the woods my whole life. I've never seen a mountain lion. I've never seen a wolf. So, yeah, with all the trail cameras and stuff that there are in this state. Someone's yeah, gonna have, true. you know what I mean. Yeah. Someone's mm -hmm. gonna have something. You never see them pop up. But. It's kind of like those Bigfoot shows. You're like, yeah. yeah how how many trail cameras are on that mountain? <laughs> on, but you heard one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, could could a uh, a wolf stray from Canada down through? I yeah. like to keep an open mind. Absolutely, but I don't think they're populated here. No. It's kind of like mountain lions. They'll go. All the way from the Dakotas to right. like a big loop and then go right, right back. But we don't have the habitat to support that type of predator. You know what I mean? No, like I we know. don't we don't have the, the running herds of yeah, like elk. elk. Yeah. You know, we don't have the antelope. We don't have whatever <clears throat> that they can try to drag down. That's why I think uh it'll be Pennsylvania that will get wolves before anybody in the northeast. Right. Because they have elk population. Right. right. And New York yeah. as well, right? So yeah. those two states introduced right. elk right and i believe that if there was ever going to be wolves they're going to go for those yeah. plus the wolf is a surplus killer so it just yeah will kill for fun yeah and i hadn't i haven't come across that in the woods. no i mean everything you find in this in the woods here is eaten down the well. you know it's clean Gone. yeah i mean you might, find the occasional, you might find the occasional bobcat kill that's covered with leaves or bear kill or whatever right. that's covered with leaves but mm. You know, a wolf doesn't do that. Yeah, but it's amazing how quickly those carcasses disappear. Yeah, yeah. I found a deadhead yesterday, and all all that was there was the skull. I couldn't find any other bones. Right, yeah. they were all just scattered. They get scattered about. Yep, between the ravens and the, yeah, ravens yeah. and the coyotes carry them off. And yeah. where we're yeah. heading up north, I mean, it's nothing but ravens. There's no crows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ravens yeah. dominate up yeah. there. And, yeah, and they will they'll find the deer as soon as you shoot it. Yeah, yeah. I was gotten a buck out and. They were waiting. Yeah. They were like, this is kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, well, they're hungry. So let's get moving. Yeah. <laughs> they're huge. Yeah. They're yeah. cool birds. They are. I, I actually, when I'm sitting in my tree saying that here and flying over, they do their like clicks and pops and they're stuff. Smart. They, yeah. They are very smart. Cool. They, they are smart. smart. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I like that on the really calm, cold days and you, all you hear is their wings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah they're not elegant. <laughs> no, they make a lot of noise. It's not like an owl. An owl. No. Whoa. Yeah. There's no stealth to them. No. <laughs> yeah. I've been in my tree stand before and owls come right by me. I was like, wow. Yeah. 
They're yeah. so silent. They are. Yeah. Yeah, because there was some little chipmunks and stuff down below, and I think it was trying to get one of those. Yeah. It didn't. It wasn't as successful, but I didn't even know it was there until I got it. Because I'm in all camo too, and I'm trying to stay still. Right. Yeah. And I was like, I mean, if I reached out, I might have been able to hit it. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty <laughs> scary. People. I mean, the hawks. I remember my dad when he was. He told me a story. He's like, yeah, I was hunting one time, and I had all full camo and face paint. It's like I was just sitting there, and this hawk came down and swooped me because it saw my eyes moving. I was like, I thought it was, you know, a tall tail or whatever. I did the same exact thing. I mean, I got close to the nest, I guess, but mm -hmm. came down and swooped me. Like, just just damn, I shouldn't have doubted that. <laughs> I almost got attacked for doing that. <laughs> you be careful what you, you know, what you say. Yep. Yeah. Jeez. Birds of prey. That just reminded me. Yeah. They cool animals for sure. Yeah. You uh, you guys getting hungry yet? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty hungry. All right. Do some burgers. Who's cooking? Do it. I'll I'll do the cooking. <laughs> okay. We'll fire up that grill. We'll have some have some moose burgers. Nice. I can get you an apron. You no, know. nah, I got one. I got I've one. Seen the apron. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen it? Oh, yeah, oh no. man. This is camp bitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the term came from my grandfather. Hey, whatever. I'll Whoever take tagged it. out first, camp bitch. Yeah, camp bitch. Nothing wrong with that.